Looking for magic cards? At flipsidegaming.com you can now use the promo code LVD to get a 10% discount on orders over $10 while supporting the channel at the same time. So yeah, Jani, Strength of the Pride, plus one, gains a bunch of life. Minus two makes an Ajani Sprite Mate token, essentially. And the zero can destroy some stuff. That's pretty niche. But there might be like some sort of life gain deck that we can build and construct it with Ajani. So could see Ajani Strength of the Pride seeing some play in like a dedicated life gain deck. There's probably some more build around cards for Ajani as well in the set. And a minus two is of course pretty flavorful that it makes a Pride Mate token. So Ajani's pretty cool. Then we've got the other new Planeswalker in blue here. Doesn't do anything the turn it comes into play in terms of like adding value. The plus is kind of reminiscent of Liliana at the Last Hope, but it doesn't kill anything with the plus ability, so it seems pretty underwhelming, but maybe like a Flyers deck that is interested in making flying bird tokens for some reason. It can kind of help you race in a way if the opponent's dealing damage to your Planeswalker, then you can use keep using the plus two to kind of swing the race in your favor. And a minus is pretty interesting too, of course, for 4 Flyer. For just 3 mana, if you can pull it off, it's pretty good. Against the control deck, it's not bad. You can just plus, maybe even get up to the ultimate ability and force some action from the opponent. And then maybe make a 4-4 four, four Flyer at some point. Could see the Sky Dancer being okay. And of course, it is just 3 mana. Always got to be careful when evaluating cheap Planeswalkers because they get exponentially better, basically, the cheaper they are. Then we've got Sorin, nice vampire build around, which is pretty neat. So what's the most expensive vampire we can put into play? Kazarov, that's pretty interesting. Nightville Predator is a vampire. Can ma basically make it uncounterable with Sorin. So that's pretty neat. If you have a Sorin, you can just play Sorin minus three right away and put a hexproof creature into play on turn three. So it's basically uncounterable and hexproof. That's pretty powerful. Sanctum Seeker, ooh, Haunt of Hightower is a vampire too. That's a pretty powerful card if we can put it in play on turn 3. So that's probably the first card we're gonna try and put in play with Sorin. Anything else that stands out? Vona is pretty good too. Alright, alright, and we're seeing a lot of vampires in the new set as well. Vampire Sovereign is also on the fringe of being playable. Twilight Prophet is a good one if we can get to the City's Blessing. So yeah, there's lots of reasons to be excited about Sorin Imperious Bloodlord. We're already seeing a lot of vampires in the set that look playable. So definitely a card I'll keep my eye on. Yeah, I'm definitely pretty excited to brew some vampire decks with Sorin. Then in red, we've got Chandra, which is of course pretty powerful. A, a weird card to evaluate in that the plus two ability you would associate more with an aggressive deck, putting an emblem on the opponent that can damage them over time. But it is more of a card that fits into a control deck with the minus and the minus three being a sweeper. So it could also just be a win condition in a red control deck where you basically just use Chandra as a win condition and also use it as a sweeper effect all built into one. Yeah, Chandra is definitely one to look forward to and of course can be countered as a big deal. So it's going to be great against control decks too. It's just a little weird that against a control deck you're only going to be using the plus ability. The minus X doesn't go to players, otherwise it would be a bit too powerful. So if you're playing against a control deck, you're just going to plus two, plus two, plus two, and eventually burn them out. So yeah, Chandra's definitely a powerful card. We'll have to wait and see in which uh, decks it fits in the best. All right, uh, I've got an Elvish Reclaimer, single green for one, two. Gets plus two, plus two, as long as there are three or more land cards in your graveyard. And then for two mana, you can sack a land to search up a land to fuel its ability. So this is an interesting card. You can kind of use it as a way to fix your mana, and it can search any land card with the ability, so you can also search up all sorts of value lands. So for example, the mono green Tron deck plays mostly forest, so you can play Reclaimer early, but then also has some value lands like Blast Zone, uh, Karn's Bastion, Field of Ruin. You can put like a bunch of one-off lands in your deck to search up with a Reclaimer. And then it suddenly turns into a 3-4 for one mana, which is pretty good too. And if you have any graveyard enabling synergies to put lands in the graveyard without using the ability, that might also be a way to approach the Reclaimer. Pairs well with Crucible, that's a good point too. We'll have a couple months where Crucible and Reclaimer are in standard. So those synergies could be quite good as well. So also a nice build around card. Then it looks like we have some sort of cycle of Cavaliers in all the different colors, some of them aren't revealed yet. 
In white we have Cavalier of Dawn, 5 mana, for a Mythic, 4-6, Vigilance, Elemental Knight. Elementals being a big theme in this deck, in this uh, set as well. When Cavalier of Dawn enters the battlefield, destroy up to one target, non-land permanent. Its controller makes a 3-3 Golem token, so kind of like a Beast Within ability. Looks like white gets access to that now as well, with uh, the newest Modern Horizons also having a similar effect. And then when Cavalier dies, you get to return Artifact or Enchantment from your graveyard to your hand. Yeah, it seems okay. 5 mana for a 4-6 Vigilance isn't bad, and the abilities are certainly relevant. Not sure in which kind of deck you would want to play this, feels like more of a mid rangey card. Doesn't really fit in a white aggro deck, doesn't really fit into a more controlling deck. I don't know, maybe there's enough elemental themes floating around that you could play Cavalier in some sort of elemental synergistic deck, but I guess it's also a knight, so it could fit into a black-white knight deck. Not sure if it's better than Vona, but you don't have to untap with it to get the ability going. So Cavalier is a bit of a mystery to me. Then we've got Altemsis All-Seeing, which is a fun alternate win condition. Deal damage to an opponent, you can reveal your hands, and then if cards with at least six different convert mana costs are revealed this way, you win the game, or your opponent loses the game, I guess. And it can also loot two cards at once, basically. Six mana for a 4-5 flyer isn't great. It's probably not gonna be uh, seeing all that much play, pun intended. But uh, yeah, could be a fun jank build around card. Then we've got the Black Cavalier. Five mana for a 4-5 lifelink. Looks like all the Cavaliers are five mana with triple in mana cost. And they're all elemental knights, a lifelink. So might be good against aggressive decks. Let's read the rest of the card. You can sacrifice another creature when you do. Destroy target creature and opponent controls. So kind of an aristocrat ability. And maybe could play well alongside Midnight Reaper in a Knight's deck. They synergize quite nicely with each other. And when the Cavalier dies, you get to return a creature card with Convert Manacles 3 or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. So even more synergy with Midnight Reaper. So those two seem to play well with each other. And could just be a nice uh, top-end card in a Black White Knights type deck. Looks pretty good. Then we've got Cavalier of Flame, the red one has kind of a fire breathing ability and when it enters the battlefield discard any number of cards, draw that many cards so you can discard additional lands, find more action and when it dies it deals X damage to each opponent and each planeswalker they control where X is the number of lands in your graveyard so also cares about lands in graveyards so might be a bit of a theme in red green here so it does have a somewhat relevant enters the battlefield ability but it doesn't impact the board like the black and the white cavaliers so in that sense it's a bit weaker it's not legendary, so you wouldn't be discarding additional copies of Cavalier to itself. So it's a little strange that, like the Fire Breathing ability, wants you to have a lot of mana in a way. But the uh, Looting ability, when it enters the battlefield, lets you discard additional lands. So they don't directly synergize with each other, but they're of course both good abilities. And then when it dies, X damage to each opponent and each Planeswalker, where X is the number of lands in your graveyard. So how many lands are you realistically going to have in a graveyard if you didn't, like build your deck around it. Probably not that many, like one or two. I don't know, the Red Cavalier doesn't seem too impressive unless there's some neat synergies that uh, reward you for discarding certain cards, but I doubt we'll see this alongside Arclight Phoenix for example. Although who knows, maybe a Mono Red Phoenix will be the next big thing. Then we'll take a look at Voracious Hydra, X Double Green Trample, and we get an O1, enters battlefield with X plus 1 plus 1 counters, where you get to choose, enters with double that number, or it fights an opposing creature. So let's say we play this for x equals 2, we get a 4-4 four, four or a 4-5 trampler for 4. That's pretty decent and scales up nicely as the game goes late. And it can also be a removal spell if you need one. I guess if you're maybe facing like a big flyer and you're behind, you would rather just kill a creature. Or if you suspect your opponent has removal at sorcery speed, you can kill something instead, but for the most part you're probably going to be interested in making a giant hydra and just trampling over for a ton of damage. Will depend whether or not there's a good ram shell, I guess it plays well alongside Nissa. Although is it better than the green finale or hydroid crisis? Probably not. All the finales are pretty good against spot removal spells, whereas hydra not particularly. Maybe there's some uh, neat cards in the set that synergize with a hydra as well. Then we get to the Ley Lines, nice reprints for Modern, Sanctity, Ley Line of the Void, Anticipation, 
I doubt these three will see much play in standard, maybe the Sanctity out of the sideboard. But it's not like the Monoret aggro deck in standard is unable to win without burning your face. They can just play some creatures. But I could still see Leyline of Sanctity seeing some sideboard play. Don't think Anticipation is quite where you want it to be. Although I guess it plays well with uh, Wilderness Reclamation, if you can play like Hydroid Crisis at instant speed on unstep. That's pretty good. But that's probably about it. And then Leyland of the Void, if you really need some graveyard hate, but this is probably mostly just a reprint for modern. Then Leyland of Combustion, whenever you and or, or at least one permanent you control becomes a target of a spell or ability, opponent controls, deals two damage to that player. Hmm, interesting. Seems a bit underwhelming at first. Like, would you even want this in the Monorad Burn Mirror? I doubt it. Or just like against the control deck, maybe? Out of the sideboard, can punish lots of spot removal. More of a sideboard card than really a build around main deck card, like maybe the Leyline of Anticipation. And then Leyline of Abundance is also one of those build around ley lines that you could easily have in the main deck alongside a bunch of mana creatures, since whenever you tap a creature for mana, you get to add an additional green. So that can be quite powerful if you can build around it, as long as we have Lunar Elves and Standard. And then 8 mana to put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on each creature you control, so also gives you a mana sink. Definitely try and build some decks around this. Just a bunch of mana elves, and then you've already got a mana sink in play. Plays well alongside Nissa for infinite mana, since the lands she animates will also make more mana. And then even if you cast it for 4 mana, it's not the worst. Whereas a card like Leyline of Sanctity, you really want to have in your opening hand when facing the burn deck. Alright, next row we've got Bishop of Wings. So this is kind of the life gainy build around card for angels. So there might be a deck there we can try and build with lots of life gain angel synergies. And two mana for one four blocks the red deck pretty well. Then we've got Agent of Treachery, seven mana for a two three. Andrew's Battlefield's mind controls a permanent, so not only a creature, permanent. If you control three or more permanents you don't own, draw three cards. They want you to play multiple agents of treachery and kind of steal effects. Seven mana is a lot but it does steal anything, so it's kind of like a Bolas's Clutches. It leaves you with a 2-3, and if you can build around it and play more steel effects, then it's also a card draw engine. So it plays well alongside Mass Manipulation and the other steel effects. I guess uh, Thief of Sanity as well. But yeah, 7 mana is a lot, so probably more of a janky build around or just in a Mass Manipulation deck. Bouncing the agent or blinking it somehow could also be good, since it's on Enter the Battlefield and not cast. But on the other hand, if it was on cast, it would be better against control decks with counter spells. Although those decks probably don't exist anymore with the fairy. All right, so kind of an interesting card and uh, worth building around maybe. Then we've got the Dread Presence for mana 3-3. Three, three. Whenever a swamp enters the battlefield under your control, you can draw a card, lose one life, or deal two damage and gain two. So this is kind of a build around for a mono black deck. Could also synergize with the dual lands from uh, Ravnica, of course, which counts as swamps. Uh, scape shift, I guess. Black green scape shift. Yeah. Turn all your lands into swamps and kill the opponent on the spot. So this is our new Valakut in standard. Definitely a jank deck there somewhere. Could be a cool build around for either a mono black or a scape shift type deck. Then we've got three mana Chandra, four loyalty, bunch of zero abilities and a minus two. The zero puts a loyalty counter on each red planeswalker you control. So this could maybe fit into like a mono red super friends deck with Dibalt. Jaya, Sarkon, Chandra, the 4 mana one, maybe some of the other Chandras in the set. Then the second one makes two elemental tokens. They can haste and get sacrificed, so there might be some elemental synergies there too in the set. And then a minus two can cast an instant or sorcery card with convert mana cost three or less from your graveyard. Gives something flashback basically. Could play well in, again, some sort of super friend style deck, maybe a deck care that cares about elementals. Or just like a blue-red spells type deck where using the minus two twice is valuable. So, seems playable. Yeah, the zero also provides a bit of sacrifice fodder for an aristocrat style deck. Plays well with Judith. So yeah, there's some neat synergies there. So yeah, I could see Chandra doing some work. It's definitely more like a synergy card than really a raw powerful card like some of the other Planeswalkers we've seen in the past. But that's a good thing. I would rather have more of these types of Planeswalkers in standard that you kind of have to build around instead of the ones where you just plus one draw card, minus three destroy creature. All right, we've got a bit of wolf tribal synergy, so might have to uh, give wolf tribal another shot. Flash, four, 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 four mana. 
other wolves and werewolves get plus one plus one. And on your end step, if you didn't cast a spell this turn, make a 2-2 wolf token. So that's pretty decent. Synergize as well with each other, since if you uh, have multiple ambushers, you can just pass a turn, end of turn, flash this in. Plays well with uh, three mana Vivian from War of the Spark. So yeah, maybe wolf, wolf Tribal featuring Vivian could be a fun deck to try out. Probably not quite good enough for modern, but worth uh, thinking about for those budget Werewolf Tribal decks in modern. What else do we have here? Hanged Executioner, 3 mana 1-1 one, one, flying, makes a spirit token, and for 4 mana you can exile the Executioner to exile a creature. 3 mana for 2 spirit tokens is always worth looking at. Has some spirit synergy with the uh, one from the previous core sets, might be playable until the core set rotates in a couple months. We're seeing a lot of like flying synergies in the new set as well. So yeah, Hanged Executioner could be part of like a blue-white flying spirit deck for a couple months in standard. Gives you access to removal in creature form, so that's always uh, pretty powerful. So yeah, we'll definitely give blue-white flyers another shot. Then we have a Drawn from Dreams, 4 mana. Look at the top 7, put two of them in your hand, the rest on the bottom. So pretty expensive card selection, but maybe there's a combo deck out there that wants to dig very deep to look for two different pieces. Digs pretty deep, finds two cards, so it's card advantage, I guess. And then we've got Knight of the Ebon Legion, 1 mana, 1, 2, 3 mana to get plus 3, plus 3 and death touch until end of turn. And on your end step, if a player lost 4 or more life, put a plus 1, plus 1 counter on the Knight. All right, so pretty nice card for maybe a mono black aggro deck. It's a vampire for the vampire deck with Sorin, and having a mana sink on a one drop is always nice. Could definitely see some play. It's also a knight, so it also has knight synergies. So it seems like a nice tribal card for different tribes. Of course, it doesn't hit very hard by itself, but you're supposed to kind of build around it a little bit, and then the ability also pumps it as the game goes along. So yeah, the knight seems pretty cool. At least it kind of breaks the mold of one mana, two ones in black that return from the graveyard. Then we've got Chandra's Regulator, two mana legendary artifact. When you activate a loyalty ability of a Chandra Planeswalker you control, it's very specific. You can pay one and then copy the ability and choose new targets. All right, so maybe this is uh, part of Chandra Tribal. And you can also discard a mountain or a red card to draw a card, so it helps you loot. So this is probably relegated to like the Chandra Tribal Monorets. Super friend style deck, I guess. Then we've got Shifting Ceratops. This one seems pretty exciting too. 4 mana for a 5-4 can be countered. Protection from blue. And then can gain Reach, Trample, Haste as well. So can be a 5 mana, 5-4 five, Haste. Cannot be countered pro blue. So if mono blue is ever a thing, this is a good way to uh, try and beat that deck. And uh, if control decks make a resurgence, I guess it's okay. But not too many counter spells being played right now. Loxodon Life Chanter, 6 mana for 6. You can have your life total become the total toughness of creatures you control. So this can potentially gain a ton of life if you're playing against like a burn deck and you have some high toughness creatures in play. Maybe something for the defender deck. And then for 6 mana gets plus x plus x where x is your life total. So this one can beat down pretty hard. So yeah, fun build around. Then we've got Dungeon Geists, which is a reprint was pretty powerful back in standard, uh, and so yeah, could also fit in that same blue-white spirits deck that we were talking about earlier. Chillbringer on steroids is a good description. It's one mana cheaper and a creature stays stepped down. So yeah, pretty powerful card. Has a proven track record of being playable. We've got Allegiance End at two mana, powerful removal spell. Can exile a creature with convert mana cost two or less, and all the copies in the opponent's hand and graveyard. So might even see some modern play as a Removal spell that also hates on, like, blood gas a little bit. Grave crawlers, etc. It doesn't search the library, but does still search for hand and graveyard. It is sorcery speed, so there will be situations where you would much rather have your cast downs or whatever, but might definitely see some uh, standard play. Then we've got Marauding Raptor. Now this is an interesting card, so they're definitely trying to give red-green dinosaurs a bit of a resurgence in the core set here. Seeing the Ceratops, the Raptor, we're seeing some other dinosaur cards as well. So this card seems pretty busted in the dinosaur deck. Makes creature spells one cheaper, so it does kind of the same thing that the other two mana, mana dorks did in the red-green deck. When a cre another creature enters the battlefield under your control, the Raptor deals two damage to it, so it's a great enrage enabler. 
And if a dinosaur is dealt damage this way, the raptor gets plus two plus oh. So you could be attacking with like a 4-3 on turn three and play like a ribjar raptor draw card. So yeah, marauding raptor seems quite strong for a dinosaur deck. Might even see play if there's like ever a format after rotation, like a arena modern or whatever you want to call it. Then the raptor could be a, a great staple in some sort of dinosaur tribal deck. It is a bit weird with uh, polyraptor since it basically ends the game in a draw because you enrage, make another copy of Polyraptor, this deals damage to it, it's not a May ability, so it keeps on going. And the game ends in a draw, so that's a little weird, but uh, maybe they're gonna like errata the Raptor so that it doesn't end in a draw on Arena or something, I don't know. The name of the Arena Eternal format is currently called Standard Plus, good to know. Yeah, I mean if you would lose otherwise, I guess you can end the game in a draw instead, but it's not exactly what you're trying to accomplish usually. So yeah, the Raptor, definitely an exciting card, and we'll give Dinosaurs another chance. Then we've got Wake Root Elemental, 6 mana 5-5, five five. you can pay a bunch of mana to untap a land, which becomes a 5-5, five five, and it doesn't go away end of turn, so... Powerful mana sink, 6 mana 5-5 five five is not exciting, the ability is pretty expensive. Don't think this will see a ton of play, unless, again, Elementals want you to have a ton of Elemental synergies. I guess it has some neat synergies with Nissa as well. If you can turn your land into a 5 5, Ultimate Nissa becomes indestructible. Can do some cool things there. But a uh, heavy green commitment, so probably mostly a mono green deck. Ooh, Planar Cleansing. Now, this is a nice reprint. Destroy all non land permanents, including Planeswalkers. So, this is a nice way to clean up the board that's filled with Planeswalkers. Yeah, Planar Cleansing might definitely see some play. Fun one to build around in that you have to build a control deck that doesn't play any. Enchantment removal, since that would die to the cleansing as well. So you have to build your deck in a completely different way than usual. Then we've got Flood of Tears. This is like the combo enabler. Return all non-land permanents to their owner's hands. If you return four or more non-token permanents you control this way, you get to put a permanent card from your hand onto the battlefield. So you're trying to cheat Omniscience into play, basically. Six mana to play your Omniscience. And then you can maybe bounce some cards that uh, have a nice enter the battlefield ability, so you can replay them. And of course, returning all null land permanents also means that the opponent is set back on tempo quite a bit. So that gives you time to abuse your omniscience. So Flood of Tears definitely seems like a powerful build around combo card. Then we've got a Rotting Regisaur, a Black 7 6 Zombie Dinosaur, so it's got some interesting applications in both tribes. And at the beginning of your upkeep, discard a card. So that's a drawback, which if you're a mono-black aggro deck that's empty-handed, you don't really care about the drawback. So that's probably the home where this will see play the most. And we'll have to wait and see whether or not mono-black aggro can be a thing. But I think there's enough cards for that archetype to exist. You don't really want to draw multiples of the Regisaur, because sometimes you'll be stranded with two Regisaurs, and if you play one you have to discard the other. But yeah, zombies and dinosaurs are tribes that got some new tools. They might play the Regisaur, we'll see. 7 power for 3 mana is a lot. Of course, not the best against uh, your Teferis or whatever, but maybe if you curve out with a bunch of 1-drops you can pressure Teferi enough that it's still fine. And if they bounce this, at least it happens at the beginning of your upkeep and not at the beginning of your end step. So if they bounce the Regisaur, then you don't get the drawback of discarding a card at least. Then we've got Repeated Reverberation, which is basically like a double double cast. When you cast your next instant spell or sorcery, or activate a loyalty ability of a planeswalker, you get to copy that spell or ability twice, and choose new targets for the copies. I wonder if there's some ability that's completely broken of a planeswalker that we can use with reverberation, or if there's like some infinite combo we can do with this. But four mana is a lot, and typically these uh, reverberate type cards don't see a ton of play. So unless there's like a broken combo with this, I doubt we'll see much of reverberation. But uh, it's a fun card. Can set up some sweet uh, plays, I guess. Especially if you can copy the reverberation with maybe the 4 mana RAL and then copy even more things. Basically all the copies. So could maybe be sweet in that type of deck. I guess this card is pretty good, actually. For like a mono green stompy deck. It's a 2 mana 3-3 three, three that can gain hexproof once if you remove a counter. But you do have to keep up 1 mana all the time to use the ability. But yeah, if there's like a mono green stompy aggro deck, then the troll might be pretty good. We're seeing a lot of these double colored cards. Could maybe be a sign that uh, the 
mechanic from Theros is going to see a resurgence. We also got the temples as reprints, so maybe we might see a return to Theros at some point, who knows. Lots of cards that play well with Devotion, all the 5 mana cavaliers with triple mana costs. The ley lines also play well with Devotion, so I've got a suspicion that we might see Devotion before the end of the next year. Then we've got Starfield Mystic, plays well with enchantments, makes them one cheaper. And then whenever an enchantment is put into the graveyard, we can put a plus one counter on it, so kind of your typical enchantment build around creature. I've seen a couple of these in the past. So if there's an enchantment deck, this could see some play. But the enchantment has to end up in the graveyard, so it's a pretty weird kind of build around. Have to sacrifice enchantment somehow to really like take full advantage of this. What do I think about the new rare lands? The scry lands are great. They were great for standard last time around, and they will be great for standard once again. They lead to kind of slower paced games where both players sculpt their draws instead of promoting the like hyper aggro gameplay where you curve out one drop, two drop, three drop and die on turn four. So that's a good thing, kind of slowing down the pace of the, the game a little bit. And also in a late game, if you draw them, you can prevent flooding by bottoming lands with the scry. So yeah, the temples are great for standard and I'm happy they're back. Then we've got a masterful replication, six mana instant, makes two golems or each other artifact you control becomes a copy of that artifact on the end of turn. Doesn't strike me as particularly great, but it is an instant, so that's important to keep in mind. Can flash into golems before blockers, which is pretty good. And then maybe you can copy something sweet and kill the opponent on the spot. Plays well with uh, Sahili, I guess. Making a bunch of servo tokens. Probably some sort of artifact build around card. I've got Scheming Symmetry, which is Vampiric Tutor for both players, basically. So each player searches a card, puts it on top of their deck. So if you have some way of milling over the top card of the opponent, or somehow manipulating it, then uh, you can break the symmetry of Scheming Symmetry, and then it can be a powerful combo enabler as well. So if there's like a two or a three card combo in standard, Symmetry can set that up. But if you want to break the symmetry, you'll have to find some creative way of milling the top card from the opponent, like a Jace can mill it, Ashok can mill it. There's probably some other cards, so it could be a fun one. And yeah, I mean, one mana tutor for modern, who knows, can also enable some combo shenanigans. Then we've got four mana, uncommon Chandra, can add mana with a minus, pump elementals with a plus, and deal two damage with a minus two. So it seems like a solid limited card, is it gonna break through in standard? Maybe in Chandra tribal, where you care about pumping elementals, elemental tribal, could be a home for Chandra as well. We've got a reprint of Loaming Shaman, Graveyard Hate card, 3 mana 3-2, three, pretty good. So yeah, just a Graveyard Hate card for the sideboard mostly. Then we've got Angel of Vitality, and that's an interesting build around Angel, 3 mana 2-2 two, two Flyer. When you gain life, you gain one more, and it gets plus 2 plus 2 if you have 25 or more life. So this is for like the Angel Tribal build around deck. Then we've got Aether Gust, 2 mana instance. I'm loving the all these kind of sideboard bullet cards that hate on certain colors, since they usually help balance standard if one deck ever becomes too powerful. You can just toss in a couple of these hate cards on the sideboard to help out, and they're not like overly powerful, but just like good enough to see play. Pretty interesting card. Probably gonna put the card on the bottom most of the time. Being able to both counter spells on the stack and permanence in play is quite powerful. But yeah, just a sideboard card, you're never gonna main deck this. Then we've got a nice demon at 8 mana, 8-8 eight, eight flying. Can pay a life to give a creature minus 2, minus 2. And when you lose life, it draws that many cards. Interesting, so it both draws cards and shrinks down creatures. It is expensive at 8 mana, of course. So I don't think this will replace Gristlebrand anytime soon. The ability is relevant, like if you can somehow lose life some other way. I'm thinking like Bolas the Citadel, then you can draw a ton of cards. So if you can cheat the demon into play somehow, combine it with Bolas the Citadel, there might be something there. So yeah, pretty exciting card. 8-8 Flying also closes out the game pretty quickly. I think you have to try and cheat this in into play somehow, since casting this for 8 mana is going to be somewhat difficult. Then we've got Chandra's Spitfire, 3 mana, 1, 3 flyer. When an opponent is dealt non-combat damage, it grows up to a 4-3. So in some sort of elemental burn deck, this could see some play, but I guess it has flying, so could be good enough for standard. Seems somewhat on the fringes. We've got Overgrown Elemental, another one for the elemental synergies. So there might be an elemental deck worth exploring. 
Yeah, if you can reanimate Villas with the different 5 mana reanimation cards, that could be another way of cheating it into play. Definitely seems like one of the better reanimation targets we've seen so far in Standard. Devout Decree, 2 mana sorcery, exiles a creature or planeswalker, that's black or red. It's another one of those hate cards. You get to scry one, so nice sideboard card. And then 6 mana, Captivating Gyre, return up to 3 target creatures to their owner's hand, so it seems more like a limited card. But a pretty interesting one. Got Bloodthirsty Aerialist, 3 mana, 2, 3 flying. When you gain life, put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on it. Could be part of the Vampire Tribal deck with Soren, where you have a bunch of life gain synergies. Got Dragon Mage, 7 mana flyer. When it deals combat damage to a player, each player discards their hand and draws 7 cards. Interesting card. I think this is a reprint as well. Alright, we've got Season of Growth, 2 mana enchantment. When a creature enters the battlefield under your control, scry 1. And when you cast a spell that targets a creature control, draw a card. So Pump Spell Tribal, maybe can fit this into like a Naya Feather deck. We've got Herald of the Sun, 6 mana, 4-4 four, four flyer. Seems like a strictly limited card. Cerulean Drake, also one of those protection from a certain color, hate cards. 2 mana, 1-1 one, one flyer, protection from red. And you can sacrifice it to counter a spell that targets you, so you can counter a burn spell, I guess, if you would bring this in against a red deck. And the creature type is Drake, so it's not a spirit for the spirit deck. Oh yeah, the reprint of Brontodon is great, also gives dinosaurs a bit more longevity. So very happy to see Brontodon again, great sideboard card. It's kind of similar to the Loaming Shaman, in that it's a creature that applies a bit of pressure, but still does something relevant as a sideboard card. And I love those types of cards where they're not dead if the opponent's not doing the broken thing that involves artifacts, enchantments, or in the case of Loaming Shaman, the graveyard, but uh, can also actually attack and block. Yeah, Brontodon is also a card you see often in the main deck, just because it's so versatile and a 3 mana 3-4 three, is actually pretty good. You've got Vampire of the Dire Moon for the Vampire Tribal deck, Death Touch and Lifelink. Look at that power creep, but uh, yeah, pretty interesting card. Could see some play in the Vampire decks alongside Soren and friends. Gives you a nice one mana play, maybe even Mono Black Aggro wants this, but I doubt it. I think we have enough more powerful one drops that deal more damage in black that we're not going to want a Vampire. Then we've got a 5 mana 3-3 three, three Dragon with Flying. When it enters the battlefield you get to make two treasures. But uh, yeah, probably just a limited card. Unless for some reason you need artifacts in play for some artifact synergies. Loyal Pegasus reprinted. That was a fun card. Well, once the rotation happens and we don't have as many white 1-drops, this can slot in to some of the 1-drops that disappeared and play alongside the Loxodon. Yeah, I don't think this card saw a ton of play when it was in standard last time. Then we've got Portal of Sanctuary, 3 mana artifact, can return target creature you control and each aura attached to it to their owner's hands. Pretty weird card. We've got Blight Beetle, part of the protection cycle, protection from green, and creatures your opponents control can't have plus one plus one counters put on them, so pretty good against Wild Growth Walker, I guess. Opponent still gains the life, but they don't get all the counters. Mostly a sideboard card against Wild Growth Walker and maybe Krasis. We've got Amber Hauler, might see some play Mono Red. If uh, rotation happens, maybe even before rotation, it's definitely a good card, since this can also go face. The double red casting cost mostly limits it to mono red. Maybe another indication that we might see some devotion show up at some points in standard as another double mana cost card. We've got Veil of Summer, one mana instance, draw card if an opponent has cast a blue or black spell this turn. Spells you control can be countered, and you and permanents you control have hexproof from blue and black. So good against this card, good against counter spells, and you get to draw cards so it can trip, so seems like a nice sideboard card for some specific matchups. We've got Rule of Law reprinted, Storm Hate, not sure if it's gonna see any play in standard. Guess it's okay against the Phoenix deck and against the finale of Promise, but also strictly a sideboard card, I think. We've got Renowned Weaponsmith, and this time we get both artifacts that it refers. And yeah, adding double colorless for artifacts is pretty powerful. So it could give birth to some sort of artifact synergy deck. We still have Psy in standard for a couple months. So those could play nicely alongside each other. Both the Heart Piercer Bow and the Vial are in standard. Can take a look at those real quick. So the Heart Piercer Bow, two mana equips for one, and then deals one damage to a creature defending player controls when the equipped creature attacks and then the Vial can sacrifice to deal 2 damage to a creature. So they're not amazing cards, probably mostly for limited, 
the Weaponsmith could still be good enough just for the mana ability, letting you cast more expensive artifacts. We've got Disfigure, nice reprint as well, good removal spell for one mana. Might see playing like the Mono Black Aggro deck as a cheap removal spell, and also good against aggro decks as, as a removal spell for one mana. So this will definitely see some play as well. We've got Flame Sweep as a new Fiery Cannonade, which hits pirates as well, and spares creatures with flying on your side. So this is going to be a powerful option for red decks that don't get access to Clarion. We've got Wolf Rider's Saddle, which there seem to be quite a few of these equipment cards that come with a creature attached to it, which is pretty neat for limited. Don't think this will see a ton of play outside of limited. We've got Disenchant, a nice reprint. That will probably see some play. Scholar of Ages, 7 mana, 3-3. Three, three. When it enters the battlefield, return up to 2 target instant and or sorcery cards from your graveyard to your hand, so pretty expensive, probably just a limited card. But it is a wizard, which is worth pointing out. A Thought Distortion, 6 mana, cannot be countered. Opponent has to reveal their hand, exile all non-creature non-land cards from that player's hand and graveyard. Pretty interesting kind of hate card. Seems more like a sideboard option against some sort of control or combo deck. I doubt it will see a ton of play. We've got Fry, this is a nice one. 2 mana, cannot be countered, deals 5 damage to target creature or Planeswalker, if that's a white or blue. So that's pretty reminiscent of Combust. 2 mana for a 2-2 Elf Scout. Plays well in a Tokens deck. Has some powerful things going for it, I guess. Got Pacifism, nice reprint for Limited. Spectral Sailor. Might see some play in the Mono Blue deck, if that deck is still a thing for the next 3 months. It's also Spirit for the Spirit Tribal deck we're talking about. So pretty nice card. If you don't need to play your counterspell, you can just 4 mana draw card. So pretty neat card for 1 mana. Has a lot of different things going on, also pirate for pirate synergies. So maybe can give pirate tribal another shot as well. Yarox Fen Lurker, double black for a 1-1. One -one. When it enters the battlefield, opponent has to exile a card from their hand, so kind of like a burglar rat, but it exiles. And then it also has a nice mana sync ability in the late game. Could be good enough to see some play, also double black. Maybe pointing towards Devotion, making a resurgence at some point. Ooh, Goblin Ringleader. Now this is an exciting reprint. Was not Modern Legal before, but now it is. So we might see this in Goblin Tribal in Modern even. And uh, yeah, if uh, Goblins are going to be a thing in Standard, this will definitely be a big part of it. 4 mana to 2 haste, and when it enters the battlefield, reveal the top 4 cards of your library, and all Goblin cards revealed into your hand. So if you get very lucky, this could essentially draw your 4 cards and put a 2-2 two -two haste in play, which is quite powerful. We've got Ferocious Pop, 3 mana, 0-1, and makes a 2-2 two -two token, so probably more of a limited card, but a pretty cool one. The art is great. And then Raise the Alarm, also an exciting reprint, making two 1-1 one -one tokens at instant speed. Could be a nice one for Celestia token decks. We never had a critical mass of token makers at 2 mana before with Celestia, so this is a great one for that deck. We'll definitely try and play some decks with the Raise the Alarm, plays great with the Loxodon as well. Plays great alongside March of the Multitudes. Yeah, Raise the Alarm seems pretty innocent, but definitely a constructed playable card. Now with this one, I'll have to read. So, Enchantment Aura, Enchanted Creature plus O plus 2, and you can tap to draw a card and discard a card. Alright, so pretty weird enchantments, nowhere near the power level of Curious Obsession. Seems more like a limited card, I doubt we'll see this show up in Constructed, unless your creature has Hexproof somehow. Good Bone Splinters, not a reprint, mostly for limited. I think Spark Harvest is, I think, strictly better than Bone Splinters for Constructed, but a good card in limited for the Sacrifice archetype, usually red-black. Maybe we'll see Act of Treason reprinted as well, and then that plays nicely with stealing the opponent's creature. Uh, this is Russian. Immolation Mask, 2-mana artifacts. Enters the battlefield, make a 1-1 one, one token attached to the mask, and you can sacrifice a creature to deal 1 damage to any target. So if you can play this alongside, like, let's say, the devil tokens from uh, Tybalt, so you can sag them and deal 2 damage to any target. That quickly starts adding up, plays well with the elementals that 3-mana uh, Chandra makes, since you can sag those before they die and get a bit of value. Seems pretty innocent, but, you know, could make for a decent uh, burn plan in some decks. Growth cycle, 2 mana instance, plus 3 until end of turn, and additional plus 2 for each card named growth cycle in your graveyard. Alright, so not the first time we've seen this type of card where it references having 
additional copies of itself in the graveyard. Uh, this time it's on a bomb spell. Not sure if this is good enough for constructed, I don't think so. Unless you can somehow put additional copies in the graveyard. Um, Convolute, reprint, pretty mediocre counterspell. I've got Uncaged Fury, decent combat trick. Even saw some constructed play in the Pummeler decks. Yeah, could see some play if there's some high-powered creatures that we can give double strike to kind of wombo combo the opponent. I've got Pulse of Morassa, which might see some play in the Bolasa Citadel decks. Gaining 6 life for 3 mana means that it nets you 3 life with Citadel. And the ability is also quite relevant, so Pulse of Morassa, definitely a card that could see some play. Negate, of course, reprinted, so we'll have access to Negate for eternity. At least they chose a nice art for it, so that's good. We've got Unchained Berserker for the Red Aggro decks, 2 mana 1-1 one, one pro white, and plus 2 plus 0 as long as it's attacking, so could even see some main deck play. Once rotation happens, I doubt it's going to replace any of the current 2 drops, but protection from white, quite relevant since it dodges the fairy minus as well. Then we've got Shaman, this seems like a limited card, 5 mana 5-4 five, Trample, when it dies draw a card. Decent card for limited, of course. We've got Octoprophet, a great name. 4 mana 3-3, three, three. Andrew's Battlefield Scry 2, so purely limited card, but a pretty good one. Chandra's Embercat, 2 mana 2-2, two, two. add red mana to cast on elemental spells and Chandra Planeswalker spells, so I guess you'll play this in Chandra Tribal. Wolfkin Bond is also reprints. could be okay in the Aura deck. We've got Unsummon, nice little reprint, 1 mana bounce spell. Could even see some play in the mono blue deck if that's still going to be a thing. Destructive Digger, 3 mana. Can sack an artifact or land to draw a card. So I guess this plays well with treasures. If you can make some treasure tokens and draw some cards, but seems a bit slow for constructed. So more of a limited card. Goblin, Bird Grabber, 2 mana 2-1. Two, can gain flying if you have another creature with flying. So also more of a limited card. Infuriate, nice pump spell for 1 mana. We've got a Reckless Airstrike, 1 mana to deal 3 damage to a creature with flying or destroy an artifact, so pretty efficient sideboard card. If you need both artifact hate and removal for flyers. Now we get to our multicolor cards. We've got Kalia, pretty nice in like the Angel Tribal deck, so could maybe go like Mardu Angels. So we'll definitely try some different variations of Angel Tribal, both Mardu and maybe Naya to play this other angel, which also has some powerful abilities, plays well with other multicolor cards. We've got a Wind's Fury, 4 mana 3-3 three, three flyer. When you cast a non-creature spell, make a 1-1 one, one spirit token. Making flying tokens is pretty powerful. We've got Omnath, which has a lot of different abilities, plays well with elementals. We've got the Yarok, Death Touch Lifelink. This is our new Panharmonicon, basically. A pretty exciting build around as well. And then Rien, I think th this was the buy a box promo if I'm not mistaken. 5-4, flying, other multicolor creature gets plus one plus so. So another anthem effect alongside the lines of like Glass of the Guild Pact, which is also an anthem for multicolors. And whenever another multicolor creature you control dies, you can return to your hand at the beginning of the next end step, so pretty powerful effect. And 5-4, flyer for 5, that pumps other multicolors is reasonable, so plays well alongside the other Naya angels like Aurelia. We've got Corpse Knight, which is also pretty exciting. Two mana for a zombie knight, so again, has some interesting tribes here, both a zombie and a knight. And whenever another creature enters a battlefield under your control, each opponent loses one life, so it's usually when a creature dies, but this time it's when it enters the battlefield, which is quite a bit better, usually. So this card could definitely see some play in zombie decks, in knight decks, in aristocrat style decks, in token decks. Seems quite powerful. And uh, what else do we have here? Creeping Trailblazer. 2-2, two, two. auto elementals get plus 1 plus 0, can pump it until end of turn for each elemental you control, so this is kind of your payoff for playing a lot of elementals. We've got the eagle as the spirit lord, giving other creatures you control with a flying plus 1 plus 1, and a 2-3 flyer by itself, so this could be part of the spirit or flyer tribal deck. Then we've got the warlord for a token deck, power and toughness equal to the number of creatures you control, or power rather, toughness is 5, so it dodges lava coils. And a nice mana sink as well, 5 mana to make a 1-1. One, one. Great card unlimited. Is it gonna see play and constructed? Maybe, we'll see. We've got Reclamation, powerful grindy enchantment. Whenever a creature you control dies, you gain one life and draw a card. Pretty expensive, but very powerful. Plays pretty well alongside like Izoni making a bunch of tokens. Got Ogre Siegebreaker, seems more of a limited card to me. And then Risen Reef, 
3 mana 1-1 one, one elemental. When it or another elemental enters the battlefield, you get to look at the top card of your library. So this is basically like the Coiling Oracle text. If it's a land, it goes into play. If it's not a land, you get to draw it. That's a powerful ability. And it happens when it enters the battlefield or another elemental. So imagine combining this with Chandra making two elementals per turn. You can very quickly draw your entire deck. All right, looking at the artifacts, what do we have? We've got Tireless Pilgrim, five mana, three, five. Enters the battlefield, you can search your library for a land card, put it on the battlefield tapped and shuffle your library. So reminiscent of uh, Solemn Simulacrum, but instead of drawing a card, you get to exile the top three cards of your library. So a nice payoff for the multicolor deck. Let me try and decipher this one. So you have to choose a creature type. Creatures of the chosen type get plus one plus one. And then three mana, three cards of the top of your library. You can reveal one card of the chosen creature type and put it in your hand, I guess. And the rest goes on the bottom. Then we've got Steel Overseer reprinted, so good for modern. Uh, are we going to see an artifact deck in standard? I doubt it, but I guess it plays well alongside Sahili and friends. And we saw some other artifact synergies. So who knows, maybe at some point we'll see an artifact aggro deck make an appearance. This is like Diamond's Mare, but instead of gaining a life, you get plus one plus one counters on it. Three mana, one one, Vigilance. We've got a Manifold Key, can untap an artifact. Target creature can be blocked this turn. Pretty interesting. So the untap synergy could be pretty powerful with some other cards. I guess it plays well with Steel Overseer. The Wands can deal one damage to any targets. When the Wand is put into the graveyard from the battlefield, deal five damage to any target. So if you can sacrifice this somehow, then I guess it's not bad. Could be okay in limited if there's a lot of one toughness creatures out there. Scuttle Mutt, three mana, two, two. Can ramp and can choose a color of a creature. Pretty weird. Four mana, four. Can choose a card name, reveal top card of your library. And if that card is a chosen name, you can sacrifice this and then draw three cards. And you can only do this at sorcery speed. If you can somehow set up the top card of your library, this would be five mana to draw three. Seems medium. Then we've got the bow and the vial to go with our two mana blue creature. And then the reprint of the temples, which are great. Field of the dead is a weird one. You want multiple lands with different names, but then you also need to fit in a colorless land somehow. Seems kind of strange. Lotus field, haven't seen this before. A land with hexproof. Enter tapped and you can sack two lands and make three mana of any one color. This is an interesting land. Is there any way to break this? I guess it plays well with uh, the one one we saw at the beginning. Yeah, this is a very cool card. It does enter the battlefield tapped, so you don't get to like abuse the extra mana right away. Definitely an interesting card, and it does have hexproof, so you're safe from Field of Ruin at least. And then Cryptic Caves, a nice way to draw some extra cards in the late game. So it definitely seems like a powerful utility land. I guess, yeah, the Lotus Field plays well with Kiora if you can untap this right away. So that's maybe one way to take advantage of Lotus Field if you can make six mana with Kiora. That could be pretty powerful. So yeah, definitely some interesting ways to take advantage of three mana on one land if you can untap it somehow. So a lot of cards. The cards they reveal at the beginning of spoiler season are usually more geared towards constructed. The cards that they haven't revealed yet are mostly going to be for limited. Maybe a, a few cards that they've left out, like one or two Cavaliers, the blue one and the green one, like the green Planeswalker they still have to reveal. So there's still a couple constructed playable cards we might see. And yeah, the cards seem all pretty interesting. Lots of different decks worth trying out. There's a white life gain deck with or without angels. There's a vampire deck. There's a flyer deck with spirits. There's Chandra tribal, Chandra control, lands and graveyard matter. Uh, maybe can update the knight decks, can try this in the Nissa deck. This could be a fun alternate win condition. All the ley lines could see some play, especially the green one is a fun build around. This with scape shift could be fun. Chandra with elemental tribal or in red super friends can try wolf tribal at some point. Spirits, this could be a nice combo enabler. Mono black aggro or vampires can give dinos another shot. Goes into spirit deck, new removal spell. Great in Dinosaurs, new Sweeper against Planeswalkers, nice combo enabler with Omniscience, nice creature in the Model Black aggro decks. So yeah, a lot of tools here. 
nice new reanimation target, lots of sideboard hates, so lots of cards to be excited about. This figure is a nice cheap removal spell for black, so now Shock is not the only one mana removal spell worth playing, which is good. Raise the Alarm is a nice one. So yeah, definitely pretty excited about M20. Corsas usually aren't the most exciting sets, but they've got a lot of new cards here that are worth building around, and a lot of interesting reprints as well. So I'm definitely looking forward to the Early Access event, which I will be participating in. Thanks to Wizards for the invite. But for now, want to thank everyone for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.